Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video. We're going to have a look at the weather the next week, 10 days for today's first video. Day 10 takes us to the 5th of February and we'll be able to extend up your map with the Excel GFS and ECM ensembles. They run around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFSB2 at the end of the video. The next four weeks gets us into the second half of February. I'll get some of that for you in a moment. Just say about the first video today was our uh, 6 a.m. upload and we'll also release Europe in Outlook 2. Please check out those two videos if you'd like to back. Like, share, subscribe on this. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, for dinner, I hope you're having a lovely Thursday. Right, so we're going to start off by having a look at temperature at 10 HPA. Warming is taking place. We've now lifted the black line here to minus 50 on this chart from uh, the JMA. We are above the minus 55, where we expect to be at this time of the year. So, uh, slight warming of the stratosphere at 10 HPA has commenced. So, we go a little bit lower down to 30 HPA. There we can see that uh, slight warming is also taking place. The black line has now just gone above the uh, grey line, which of course is the trend line for this time of the year. That's happening because of this warming that's taking place over Siberia at 10 HPA. That warming moving from Siberia into the Arctic and North Pole. The GFS Midnight Run looks like this. Warming is going to continue over the uh, next few days. will be sustained and displacing the polar vortex, the blue colours, at its roots in the stratosphere, out into northern parts of Europe and into the North Atlantic as well. We don't, however, get rid of the polar vortex. The stratospheric PV will remain intact over the next couple of weeks, albeit displaced maybe more towards the um, Russian side of the Arctic. If this stratospheric polar vortex starts getting towards Siberia, that could be quite interesting a little bit later on into February, we start to see a tropospheric response to that. But the stratospheric polar vortex is still alive and well and in business up to the 11th of February. Those blue colours are still there in the um, stratosphere, all bit displaced away from uh, the North Pole. <coughs> Excuse me. And if we have a look at the um, GFS 6 set, again, it's much of a much. This warming will be sustained over Siberia and moving into the North Pole, but not enough to split BB, not enough to uh, get rid of the stratospheric polar vortex over blue colours. Displace, yes, but uh, continue there in the stratosphere at 10 HPA over the North Atlantic and Northern Europe uh, through the next week, 10 days. As we move in towards uh, the second week of February, signs may be that the PV begin to move a little bit further northwards and eastwards, but still there, still in business up to the 11th of February. Uh, Winking of zone winds is taking place while this uh, warming is going on. So we'll just get rid of GFS ensembles temporarily. You can see from the blue line, which is uh, this year's stratospheric polar vortex in terms of the zone wind, it has now reached the uh, the black line, which is the trend. So um, we are seeing a weakening of zonal winds at the moment. Putting in the GFS ensembles, the zonal wind will continue to weaken over the next few days. Actually going a little bit weaker than average, then bouncing back. Some degree, anyway, as we go through into um, yeah, as we go through into uh, early February. Although not getting back to the very strong zone of wind, probably, but we had um, earlier on in the winter. But nevertheless, a little bit of a bounce back in the zone of wind through the open of February. That is happening because we aren't splitting the polar vortex. We aren't reversing uh, the zone of wind. It's not enough of the warming for that. So we'll keep monitoring. We'll keep looking at uh, what's going on in strategy here. I'll keep you up to date over the coming few days. Centering temperature is still sitting at 5.2, which is uh, 1.3 degrees above average. That's provisional to, <coughs> to the 25th of uh, January. Probably going to hover around there, maybe tick down a little bit more, but I think it'll hover around 5 degrees uh, until month's end. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. The next couple of weeks, the uh, red line is the first year upper air temperature average for Birmingham, starting off uh, below average at the moment. Generally, say average a little bit on the cool side through the rest of uh, January into the opening days of February. However, further on through the first week of February, there is a bit of a warming trend taking place there. So, Later on through the first week of February, it may turn quite mild. Precipitation-wise, we're going to be seeing a lot of dry weather through the rest of January into the beginning of February, for the south anyway, and then uh, further on into February, it might start turning a little bit more unsettled. Temperature anomalies, from the 26th January to 3rd of February, about average, a little bit below the far south, a little bit above the far north, 
not particularly big deviation either way. Uh, precipitation anomalies from the 26th January to the February can be dry over north, especially so down in the south. The latest info map from EarthNordSchool.net shows we're bringing a chilling north to northeasterly wind today. However, this is not an Arctic or polar source northerly, such as we had like a week or so uh, ago. Um, so it's chilly, yes, but it's not desperately cold. Right, so let's go through chart day. Very south of Lake Superior, Mac Euro Road is looking for uh, midnight on Sunday. We have high pressure south, low pressure north. The winds coming in from off the island. Should be relatively mild, especially so for more northern areas. So a little bit of northern snap on Monday. Back to westerlies on Tuesday. Into like a northwesterly on Wednesday. And then by Thursday, Friday, we're going back into west southwesterlies. It all looks pretty much standard there uh, through next week with uh, everything coming in from off the Atlantic. I can't again with high pressure south, low pressure north scenario on Sunday. Um, into next week, a bit of a northwesterly, more of a northwesterly than the UK Met has. And a stronger wind as well, more tightly packed ice bars, could bring some gale or severe gale force winds into the far north. Then wind backs into west again on Thursday, and uh, we bring mild air particularly into the south by uh, Thursday. Again, all lots pretty standard this, nothing particularly dramatic going on. Other than maybe that gale force wind in the north around Wednesday. GFS midnight run uh, with low pressure north, high pressure south on Sunday. A little bit of a northwesterly push for Monday. Back to west is on uh, Tuesday. Back to northwest so to northern is on Wednesday. And then high pressure building into the south through the first weekend of February. Should bring a lot of dry weather actually across much of western Europe. And there's increasing risk of frost and fog with that I would have thought. Uh, so we start to pull in the air from off the continent. <coughs> Excuse me, once again, in what extent, race, that high pressure starts easing its way up towards Scandinavia. So as we go into the second week of February, high pressure begins to take over, or try to take over, from Scandinavia into northwestern parts of Russia. And we're almost pulling in an easy wind by the end of the GFS midnight run, with quite a lot of cold air sat just to our east. That all looks very, very poised to start unleashing the beast. However, keep in mind that is over two weeks away, and is very unlikely to verify the GFS 6 f run, again, with uh, high pressure south, low pressure north on Sunday. Northwest is on Monday, back west is Tuesday, northwest is Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Friday, into first weekend of February. Up to day 10, high pressure sitting in the south, low pressure out to the northwest. In the extended range, we don't get high pressure going up to Scandinavia with the GFS 6 z It just remains to our south over the continent. So, actually, the second week of February on this GFS run, very mild, uh, until a very end, which is length of February, and by then the high pressure sort of centred over Western Europe might bring some frost and fog. If you enjoyed this video, please can you like, share, and subscribe, but you don't stream out, work, drop a comment, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Please put on 50 subscribers, that's all, to get to 15.5k. Uh, so, please give us a up and we thank you so much for doing that. Right, uh, GM again, all much of a muchness as we go through next few days. Everything coming in from off the Atlantic, finishing up this strong and really mild southwest wind and deep low pressure around the North Atlantic and into Green. That's polar vortex, of course, um, looking really powerful there. That's probably uh, down to the displacement uh, event in the stratosphere. And then the ECMWF uh, with low pressure south, uh, low pressure north, I should say, uh, high pressure south uh, for uh, Sunday. Northwest is on Monday, back to West is Tuesday, Northwest is Wednesday, it's Thursday, then back to Southwest is uh, versus Friday. Everything coming in from the Atlantic until around day 10, then high pressure building across the west of Europe. That's a mild bridge, but might bring some frost and fog to the south, especially if the skies are clear. And that, of course, is a big unknown. This is the precipitation broadcast based on that ECM run from Tobetio.com. Lots of dry weather for south. Some precipitation at times up in the north. Cold enough between the rain bands. Got some snow at times as well, but um, very little down in the south. Then high pressure building through the west of Europe by day 10. I may have said I'd be able to show you the on samples. We haven't got those for this video, so very sorry about that. So the last thing we'll look at will be, we'll try and get them up from ECMJ.INC tomorrow. Last thing we're going to look at will be uh, CFSB2. These are 500 millibar high tolerance breaking down into weekly beers. The first week beer will take us from the 26th of January to the 1st of February. High pressure will be over to the west of the country. Quite a lot of dry weather and uh, pretty mild, especially so in northern areas. Into uh, week two. Which is the 2nd to the 8th of February, low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic, combining with high pressure 
over uh, uh, France and to our south and east. Looks very mild, that. And reasonably dry down the south a little bit more and settle up in the north. Low pressure in the trial for week three. This is the night 15th of February. Deep low pressure in from off the Atlantic then. And then week four is the 16th, 22nd of February. So low pressure then beginning to head down towards Biscay, possibly side to temperature stream southwards. That might be going colder. We have got some high pressure sitting to our north and east. So maybe that will be trying to get wind in to an easterly. However, it's a long way off. It's not in a great position for easterlies. Um, no, second half of February, you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Right, we done. If you enjoyed the video, please do you a like, subscribe, and share with everybody. If you do that, why drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. We thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Just to tell you what's coming up tomorrow, we're going to have the 6 a.m. upload. Jeremy Friday, uh, 10 to 14 day for you uh, tomorrow as well. Um, we'll be live streaming as well as all that from um, uh, from half past 10, 10 30. So it's going to be epic. Lots of content coming up tomorrow. Keep checking back to the channel for more. But for this video, that's all for now. And thanks so much.